Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Soy Travels. For today's episode, we'll be talking about the history of Emirates. The airline is the third largest airline by scheduled revenue passenger kilometer flown and the number of international passengers carried. Now before we start, I would like to thank everyone for continued support. My channel is regularly posting videos on aviation and travel contents, so if this is something that you might be interested in, please do consider clicking the subscribe button below and we'll surely appreciate it. Now if you're ready, I'm definitely am, let's start. You are watching Soy Travels. During mid-1980s, Gulf Air began to cut back its services to Dubai as it was concerned with providing regional feeder flights for other carriers. As a result, Emirates Airline was conceived on March 1985 with backing from Dubai's royal family and was required to operate independently from the government subsidies apart from 10 million US dollars. One of the best airlines in the world at that time, the Pakistan International Airlines played a large role establishing Emirates Airline by providing technical and administrative assistance to the new carrier as well as leasing the new Boeing 737-300 and Airbus A300-B4-200. The Royal Family's Dubai Royal Air Wing also provided airline with two used Boeing 727-200 Advanced. The airline's first flight EK600 from Dubai UAE to Karachi, Pakistan on 25th of October 1985. By 1986, the airline had added destinations such as Colombo, Dhaka, Amman, and Cairo to its route network. In 1987, a second Boeing 727 was purchased from Dubai government, and A300 was temporarily replaced by second example from Kuwait Airways. On 3rd of July of the same year, Emirates received its first bought aircraft, an Airbus A310 with registration A6-EKA, and with two examples launched by daily non-stop services to London Gatwick on 6th of July 1987. On the same year, the airline added Frankfurt via Istanbul and Mali in Maldives. By the end of 1987, Emirates was serving 11 destinations. This was followed by an expansion into Far East market in 1989, with flights to Bangkok, Manila, Singapore and Hong Kong in 1991. During the first decade of operations, Emirates recorded strong growth averaging 30%. Welcome aboard our Emirates 3 Class A380. By the early 1990s, Emirates was among the world's fastest growing airlines, with a revenue increase to approximately 100 million US dollars each year, approaching 500 million US dollars in the year 1993. With the onset of Gulf War, business increased for Emirates as the war kept other airlines out of the area. It was the only airline to continue flying in the last 10 days of the war. Emirates started offering round-the-world services from autumn of 1993 after a partnership with U.S. Airways was established. By 1995, the airline expanded the fleet to six Airbus A300s and eight Airbus A310s and built a network up to 37 destinations in 30 countries. In 1996, the airline received its first Boeing 777-200 aircraft and was followed shortly thereafter by six Boeing 777-200ERs. The arrival of 777s allowed Emirates to continue its Singapore service onward to Melbourne, commencing in 1996. In 2000, Emirates placed an order for 25 Boeing 777-300s, 8 Airbus A340-500s, 3 Airbus A330-200s, and 22 of the double-decker Airbus A380. 
Its frequent flyer program Skywars was also launched in 2000 as the airline grew. Towards the end of the year, Emirates planned to start long-haul services to the east and west coast of the United States, as well as non-stop flights to Australia and Brazil. In 2002, Emirates figures increased to 18% to over 6.8 million against the previous year. Our goal has always been to connect the world, to transport you to unforgettable places, to reunite old friends, loved ones, and distant families. Which is why we're working harder than ever to reconnect the planet, protecting you both in the air and on the ground, providing the most hygienic environments, the cleanest air in our airplanes, and the safest social distancing measures. But we're not just about prevention, we're also driving the solution. We're helping to keep the world open by transporting COVID-19 vaccines to communities all over the world in 48 hours or less, forming alliances with key partners to ensure this is done in the smartest, safest way possible. We know how desperate you are to get back to normality. We feel the same. That's why we're working non-stop to bring the world back together again. At the 2003 Paris Air Show, Emirates signed an order for 71 aircrafts at a cost of 19 billion US dollars. In 2004, Emirates began flying non-stop to New York City's John F. Kennedy International Airport using its new Airbus A340-500. These flights meant a resumption of non-stop air services between United Arab Emirates and the United States, after Delta Airlines withdrew its flights in 2001. Emirates steadily captured traffic from South Asia to North America, allowing passengers to bypass the hubs of British Airways, Lufthansa, and Air France, with transit stop at Dubai International Airport instead. Similarly, Emirates competes with British Airways, Cathay Pacific, Malaysia Airlines, Qantas, Philippine Airlines, Singapore Airlines, Thai Airways, as well as Middle Eastern rivals Etihad Airways, Saudi and Qatar Airways, and other airlines on the lucrative London to Sydney routes. The growth of Emirates has drawn criticisms from carriers such as Lufthansa and Air Canada, who claim Emirates has unfair advantages. Lufthansa has continuously lobbied the German government to limit expansion of Emirates into Germany. Comparably, Air Canada has objected to any expansion into Canada from Emirates. The dispute has received attention from governments of UAE and Canada, and despite many discussions from both governments, Emirates has not given landing rights in Canada beyond Toronto, and has been denied expansion to Calgary and Vancouver. There's a battle being fought for our skies, and most people don't even realize it. Three airlines from two countries the size of South Carolina are trying to take over international commercial aviation. Using the immense wealth of their countries, they're illegally pouring billions of government dollars into luxurious new aircraft, selling cheap seats and unfairly crushing competition. The issue with the Gulf carriers is that they've been massively subsidized by their governments. They're dumping seats into the market. We can't compete. They're running us out of our markets. They're doing it by taking our jobs, taking our routes. They've done it in Europe. They've done it in Asia. They've done it in Australia. And the next stop for them is to do it in the U.S. Well, we've got trade agreements with over 120 countries called Open Skies Agreements, and we've got real problems with two of them. The UAE and Qatar committed to the notion of no subsidies, foreign government subsidies are simply illegal. The Open Skies Agreements call for a fair and equal opportunity to compete, to ensure that we compete on a level playing field. Us is not subsidy. In 2020, Emirates is one of the major airlines that was hard hit by COVID-19 pandemic. The airline has reported 3.4 billion of losses in the first half of financial year. It was also reported that thousands of cabin crews and pilots have lost their jobs throughout 2020. Emirates has experienced losses during the pandemic just as other airlines in the world have. Notwithstanding, the airline still remains optimistic about the airline industry's eventual recovery from pandemic. 
Emirates Airlines grew from modest beginnings to becoming a global aviation player, recognized for excellent industry-leading products and services. With the current pandemic and after losing billions of dollars, the future of Emirates is still bright. Thank you so much for watching this video until the end. You may also leave your comments and your personal experience with Emirates on the comment section below. Now if you find this video informative and interesting, please also like, share and consider subscribing to my channel for you to be updated on my latest weekly videos on aviation and travel contents. You may also check my other videos up here. That's all for today everyone. Keep it safe and see you in my next video.